all things great and small are to be loved as one and all. This is what God said to me one morning when I woke up. And on contemplating this, I understand what he meant. In creation, there are no spare parts. Everything has its place. Everything is of value. Everything is worthy. Everything has something to contribute to the whole. There is nothing that is in creation that has it all within itself. For anything to come about, it takes many others in creation to bring it about. There is nothing that one can do without the assistance of others. There is nothing that one can have without the assistance of others. There is not even one thing that a person can feel or any living being can feel without the assistance of others. We cannot breathe air unless the trees are breathing. The trees breathe because we breathe. The blood in our bodies flow because the rivers flow. Our cycle for women every month is affected and the contributions of that cycle comes from the moon. The sun gives us light. It feeds the plants. It feeds us. We get vitamin D's and God knows whatever else from it. Mother Earth is a living being who is constantly contributing with unconditional love to all beings on this planet. This planet is in, is in the galaxy with all other planets, with the sun in the middle. And Earth being here in its place is contributing to all other planets, like all other planets in this galaxy is contributing to Earth. The galaxy is in the universe and all planets and all beings and all things in the universe is contributing to all other planets, all other galaxies and all other beings in the universe. In other words, there are no elites in creation. The divine infinite source do not prize any part of itself more than any other parts of itself. To do so will cause division, and there is no division in divinity. There is all unity, oneness, oneness of all things. To think that something is better than something else to think that one person is more important than another. To think that an animal or a plant is more valuable to in than all other plants. That is the ego mind. That's the carnal mind. That's the lower mind. Thinking. That is not the divine mind. That is not the spirit mind. That's not the mind of truth. Because the mind of truth, which is the divine mind, sees all things, all things as equally important. That ensures the oneness of all things. And it is very important for us to cultivate our spirit mind, our divine mind. Because in doing that, not only will we bring balance back onto earth and within ourselves, but we elevate all others as we ourselves ascend. Because we are all one, we cannot all ascend unless truly ascend to establish heaven on earth, that eternal peace, unless we are all uplifting each other. And uplifting each other and, and, and 
understanding that all things are valuable and all things are equal does not mean that all things are the same. Again, there is not one thing in all creation that has everything that creation is. We all have some attributes. We don't have all attributes. We have some attributes. But the beauty of this is that it ensures that we always have to work together, to pull together to make anything come about. This reinforces the oneness and the importance of the oneness of all things. When we start to regard that every attribute, every living thing has things to offer others that will service them and benefit them and bless them. And every single thing is in need of the service and contributions from others. Again, human beings could not breathe unless the trees breathe. So that gives us a regard for trees. If the trees weren't here, human beings and animals could not breathe. We could not live on this planet. Something as simple as that. But everything that exists on this planet, everything that God Almighty has made is important. And it is in service to others and it's in service to others by being itself we don't have to all be alike but if we are truly being ourselves utilizing the things that we are naturally endowed with whatever talents gifts abilities it will be naturally in service to others because this is the way the whole thing is constructed, divinely designed. So yes, all things great and small is to be loved and all. When you love all things, you elevate all things. All things. Because all things that are created is an expression of the divine infinite source itself. When you love everything, you are loving Divine Infinite Source. And that includes loving yourself. Love is the fulfillment of the laws. It is the ultimate law. It is the ultimate because it ensures oneness and harmony and balance of all things. Creation is not about sameness. It's about oneness. It's not about everything being a carbon copy of one thing. It's about everything uniquely and beautifully created, being in harmony and realizing that we are all interconnected. We all need each other. There is genius in differences. But differences doesn't mean you cannot be in oneness. Men and women are different. But we can live together in oneness. Each contributing the attributes that we have to the other. And together, we create life. If the planet was filled of females, life as human beings would cease to exist. The same would be of males. This is the way it was created. If we live in harmony with the natural way of things. We all can excel and prosper and thrive as it was meant to be.
and we should start to change our programming in regarding human beings as different races. There is only one race of human beings on this planet. We're all of the same race. Are there different races of apples? Their apples come in different colors. But are there, or do we regard them as different races? Do we regard roses as different races? When they come in, in loads of different colors? No, we don't. This is the ego mind, the carnal mind, the mind that sees separatism and delights in put it in elevating itself while putting down others. If you have to put down someone to make yourself feel important, then what that should really tell you is that you really don't feel like you are worthy within yourself. We focus more on the oneness of all things and the beauty of all things and delight in all of the different unique ways in which we all show up, knowing that we all have something wonderful to contribute to all others that will elevate us all, then we will be cultivating the spirit mind, which essentially is what we are here to do in the first place. It takes many hands and many lives to bring anything into manifestation. Many hands, many lives, much contribution from many to bring one thing into manifestation. Consider the chair you're sitting on. Really consider that chair and all the different elements and parts that the chair is made out of. Then consider all the people that brought all those parts together to make that chair. One chair so that you can sit on at your computer or whatever you're doing so that you can benefit from it. But it took many lives, many elements, many hands, much thought for you to have the opportunity to rest in that chair. Give thanks for that and send love to all of those people and elements that blessed you with the chair. This is what it means to be truly grateful, lovingly grateful. When you consider these things, and when you really start to consider these things, you realize that all elements are important, of, of equal importance. Because if they weren't important, you couldn't have what you have. You couldn't be you, who you are, even you, yourself. The whole entire universe and everything on earth is contributing and making it possible for you to not only live, but to exist. This is divine power in action, real time. It's an organization of power that all brains could not comprehend because there's just so much going on in every single moment and in every single thing that exists. As human beings, like all beings, we are inherently endowed with skills and talents. Skills and talents that are meant to be used and contribute to the welfare 
and well-being and goodness of not only ourselves but for others. There is no such thing as an untalented person. There is no such thing as a person of no value. Every single life that exists is of value and has talents and skills to contribute. And it doesn't matter what those skills are because those skills, whatever they are, they have it to put to use and benefit of others and it will benefit them. When we move away from this idea that there are certain talents and certain skills that are more important, then we will really discover how magnificent that we are as individuals and what our contribution could be to others that would benefit others like others are benefiting us. There is no such thing as an elite person. If one person is elite, that means they have been set apart. And if they are set apart, they are no longer part of the oneness of all things. And that cannot happen because divine creator will never or can ever be divided. Everything is important. Everyone is of value. Whatever you can do, whatever in, in innate talents and skills you have, whatever your potentials or abilities are, is important that you discover them and put them to use for others. You're doing your part by being who you are and being it joyfully, knowing that you are of value and what you give is worthy. Know that you are equally worthy like everyone else. There is no one above you and you are above no one else. We are all worthy. We are all of value. And we all have something to contribute, to develop, to reach our potential in the greater scheme of things. However it plays itself out, it plays itself out perfectly. If you are there and you can fix the door or work out a situation that needs problem solving, or if you are just there, breathing, you are contributing. Every time you breathe, you keep a tree or a plant alive. That is extremely important. If that is what you came in to do, then do it. But we are all multi-talented. We all have multiple skills. Discover who you are and what you can do and feel good about that. Because in doing that, you are expressing the divine within yourself. And how magnificent that is. When you start to live from your divine mind, you will be in a constant state of awe and celebration, fascination how wonderful and magnificent everything is. You begin to really understand what an absolutely omnipotent creation we are all a part of, we all live in. You will see things differently. You will see them with the divine eyes. How beautiful and magnificent everything is. How everything works together. So many things working together. For even the simplest thing, like a raindrop. 
the rustling of trees, a cup of tea. How many things came together so that you can have a cup of tea? It is wonderful and fascinating. And that will nourish the joy inside of your own soul. For everyone and everything, including yourself. And how rich and abundant everything is. There is no shortage of anything that any one of us would need. And if there is a perceived shortage, that's because there are beings who are not valuing who they are and what they have to contribute, and they're not contributing. It's not that everything that we need is not provided. It has all been provided. It is all provided. It's done. We just have to open ourselves up and use our divine mind to see it. And isn't that wonderful? And love it. And be grateful for it. We cultivate that we are indeed enriched with the richness of the universe. This is how we cultivate our true selves, our spirit selves, our divine selves. This is love in action and in thought and in feeling. This is really being in a state of love which is a heavenly state. Thank you. Till next time. Love everyone and love yourself.